Okay, let's look at Newton's law of gravitation a different way. We're going to look at it and use it as a ratio. For instance, I have two objects here, and the force of gravity between them is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. So not a lot of gravity. I can calculate that using this formula. But what I want to know is what's going to happen if I make some changes to the system. If I, for instance, make this one twice as big, and make this one one-eighth as big, so it's, it's smaller, it's one-eighth the size. And I take the two of them, and I move them till the distance is one quarter of what it was. Well, how do we write that? We use prime here to indicate the new condition. So the new mass one is going to be two times the old mass. Uh, the new mass, m2 prime, is going to be one-eighth of what it was. And the new distance is going to be, or d prime, is going to be one quarter of the old distance. So let's look at the ratio the way it works. I'm going to first do it a simple way, and then I'm going to repeat the problem, but use it a little more elaborate way, so if you're having trouble understanding it, it'll all work out. Okay, the force of gravity from this formula varies directly with the mass, meaning the mass is in the numerator. The force of gravity that you calculate varies inversely with the square of the distance. If you look, the distance goes here, it's in the denominator, and it's squared. So gravity varies inversely with the square. The further apart it gets, the less gravity you have, because it's in the denominator, and it's squared, so it, it decreases rapidly. Okay, so what I can say, this is a simple way. Um, it's not a proper mathematical proof, and I'll do that next, but this is a simple way of doing it. I say that the new gravity, how has it changed? This means varies with, how does it vary? It's changed. Well, it's changed directly with the mass. So any change I make to the mass will directly impact the final number. So what did I do to the mass? I made the first mass twice as big. What did I do with the second mass? I made it one-eighth as big. And what did I do with the distance? I made the distance one-quarter as big. But i got to remember, for distance, it's an inverse square. So I got whatever change I made to the distance, i got to put it in the denominator. So it's times 1, and the denominator is 1 quarter squared. I've got to square the whole thing. So directly with the mass, directly with the mass, inversely with the square of whatever change I made. So I multiply this all out, the 1 quarter squared, and then invert it and put it in the numerator. I get that the force of gravity, how did it change? This all adds up to 4 times. Gravity is 4 times as big. So the new force of gravity then is going to be uh, 2.3 times 10 to the negative 7 times 4. It's 4 times bigger. The new force of gravity is 9.2 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. Directly with the mass, directly with the mass, inversely with the square. Now let's do it that has a method that has sort of a more mathematical proof to show exactly how this works in case you need to prove it. Okay, we're going to do the same problem but in a different way. We're going to kind of use a formula that puts mathematically this relationship I was talking to together. Remember, we have two objects, different masses, and they have a certain force of gravity of attraction between them, and we've made some changes. And the way you figure out how you write these down is just basically how you say it. What did I do to the first mass? The new, remember prime means the new after the change. The new mass, one, is two times the, the old mass. What did I do to the other mass? What did I do to mass two? I made it one-eighth as big. So mass two equals one-eighth mass two. Uh, what did I do to the distance between them? The new distance is one-quarter the old distance. Once you have these, it's easy to just plug them into the formula. Here's the formula. The ratio of the new gravity, what's gravity like now, compared to what it was like when we started, that ratio is the same as the ratio, it's dependent on what happened to the first mass, what's its ratio, how did mass 2 change, m2 prime over m2, and what happened to the distance between them. Now the distance between them, remember, is inverse square. So the change is up here, prime is up here, but it's in the denominator over here. Make sure you don't forget that. Okay, so let me put my numbers in. The new force of gravity, this ratio between it and the old force of gravity, the way it was before, um, I sub in. What happened to, what's the new mass like? It's two times the old mass. So I increased it two times the old mass. If something doesn't change, 
then both these are the same. The new mass is the same as the old mass for the other mass, then that just cancels out, it, it disappears. But there was a change. The new second mass, it's one eighth. So I changed it. The new mass is one eighth the old mass, so I get rid of the prime, because this represents the new mass, two. Oops, I put one, I meant two. Don't send me a bunch of email about that, okay? Now, the distance, what did I do with the distance? Inverse square. I replace the new distance with what it, one quarter of the old. So this d squared is one quarter d squared. I replace the new distance with one quarter of the old. Remember, it's in the denominator. And whatever you do to this, you got to do to the whole thing. So this d is squared and the one quarter is squared. Okay? So then I get this after I plug everything in, that cancels with that, that cancels with that, that cancels with that, that becomes a 1. So I get 4. Same ratio as I got last time. I rearrange this. The new force of gravity is 4 times the old force of gravity, which is 4 times, what was gravity like before I made these changes? 2.3 times 10 to the negative 7. Gravity now is going to be 9.2 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. There you go. Just a different way of doing it. If you have trouble understanding it, you can do this a couple of dozen times, and then you start to realize, oh, the way we did it before is just change 2, 2, and inverse square for the denominator. That's where, if you look before, I had 2 times 1.2 times 1 over 8 times 1 over 1 quarter squared. Same thing. Got that number.